Back to Tornado Cash. Uh, a business school professor is taking a stand against the U.S. Treasury blacklisting of Tornado Cash by making donations using the crypto mixer. Joining us to break this down is Omid Malikan, the author of Rearchitecting Trust. Um, hi. So this is an interesting kind of proposal. Uh, can you just break us down? What are you trying to accomplish with this? Is this sort of just like you're trying to draw publicity to this, or what's what's the goal behind this uh, campaign? The goal was to make the point that in crypto, transparency, total transparency is actually the default state, unlike, say, if you make a payment through a bank. So then if someone decides to use a privacy protocol like Tornado Cash um, to block some of the details of their uh, whatever it is that they're doing on the blockchain, there are an infinite number of applications where this would be completely innocuous, where the reasons why someone might want financial privacy um, are the kind of thing that almost anybody can agree with, including people who, who work in the U.S. government. So I made two donations, one to Planned Parenthood and one to a secret group of Russians that are helping Ukrainian refugees in order to make the point that if protocols like Tornado Cash are not allowed to exist, then all of these legitimate applications of blockchain go away. So we kind of talked about this in one of our earlier segments, but, you know, as you know, the U.S. government generally feels like they have to just like do something. They can't just do nothing. So, you know, what, what are you sort of proposing that should be done instead of this? Right. I mean, you know, if you do have some evidence that these mixers are being used by North Korea and there's pressure on the U.S. government to just like show that they're taking a stance against this, what should they do? I mean, just let the mixers just exist and just leave them alone. Or is there something that they could do to demonstrate that they're taking action that wouldn't be have the kind of side effects that, you know, you, you, you mentioned here? There is this tendency when government officials talk about illicit activity through the banking system for them to make it seem like that's literally the only way where they can do law enforcement. Uh, and this actually is increasingly a problem for the traditional banking system where KYC, AML and sanctions laws are not only choking off any improvement or innovation, but uh, putting a tremendous toll on people who are in no ways a criminal, but they might be unbanked, underbanked, some kind of a minority, poor, etc. So I think if the U.S. government wants to stop North Korea from doing bad things, uh, and by the way, I'm, I'm never sold when someone comes and says, but this is being abused by North Korea. I, I'm no expert on hacking and cybersecurity, but I imagine it's not always clear who's doing what. That said, there are a lot of very smart people who work in places like the FBI. They have many resources to prevent illicit activity. And a lot of times the data trail that blockchain produces, even if you go through a mixer like Tornado Clash, is enough evidence for them to go and do law enforcement through other means. Uh, Professor Malikan, did, did you get any pushback uh, from, from Planned Parenthood when they got when they got they received the uh, tornado cash donation? Were they like, gee, thanks for the trouble. Now we got to deal with the Treasury Department. You, you did <laughs> uh, us no I, favors. I, I have not been in touch with them, so I don't know how they feel about it. I do point out, though, that when I went through the process of making that donation on their website, they have the option to make an anonymous donation where you don't reveal any information for yourself. It's just, again, because transparency is the default state in crypto, um, if I make an anonymous donation to uh, Planned Parenthood, but then that donation could be tracked back to my Ethereum address that perhaps owns the NFT that I happen to send the students in my class for finishing the class, now I've completely de-anonymized myself to the general public. And there are many legitimate use cases where people who are not doing anything illegal would want that kind of privacy. All right, just briefly, uh, I guess this is a simple question. You talked about a Russian secret group that is donating the, for the Ukrainian cause. Uh, how many people are involved in that group? Would you have that information? I don't. To be honest, I don't know that much about them. But what I do know is given the political situation in Russia right now, having privacy is actually paramount for the safety of that group. And if suddenly it shows up that someone that might have some level of prominence in the U.S. is making donations to them, that information might be used to de-anonymize them. Uh, I point out that Vitalik Buterin also, long before these sanctions, used Tornado Cash to make donations to the Ukrainian cause, which he publicly supports. So he wasn't 
risking revealing anything about himself that could be bad for him, but he wisely realized that if it becomes revealed that a very prominent, wealthy Westerner like Vitalik is donating money to a certain group, that might be bad for that group.